Hi everybody, we are back. Um, this is Hazel, you remember her. New interior, she looks perfect. Now I want to try something a little different. Um, on the Model A that I have, setting the timing is very simple. Um, I think Ford learned a little bit from this when doing uh, the procedure for setting the timing on the Model A. Um, you pull out the pin on the, on, from the front of the timing gear cover, you insert it, you rotate the engine, but as soon as that pin drops into a divot on the uh, timing gear, you are at top dead center, and that's where it's supposed to be set. But for a Model T, you want the engine to fire 15 degrees after top dead center uh, when you're uh, running the stock coils. So um, I bought a nifty little kit uh, from Langs. It was kind of pricey, so I, uh, I have high hopes, but we'll see. It is the ignition timing indicator with LED. Um, so, uh, let's take a look at it and see what it is. So here is everything included in the kit. You have instructions, uh, a pair of alligator clip wired t uh, leads with an LED on the end. See it there? And then this fancy dancy tool here. And this was the guy that I'm kind of curious about if this actually works or not. As you can see, it has the degrees marked in it. And then this here is supposed to sit on the top of the cylinder, number one cylinder. So as that goes up, you'll have a degree mark. And everybody knows that you want top did cylinder or top did you want the number one piston to uh, fire at 15 degrees past top dead center. So hopefully that's what this kit will do for us. According to the directions, the uh, step one is remove the rod from the timer so that you can manually rotate the timer body. Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I don't love taking the uh, timer rod out of the actual timer. I'd much rather take it off, take it off the base of the steering column um, and be able to rotate it that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just reach down in here, Pull the little cotter pin. There she is, just a little tiny guy. And then pop the timer rod out of that, just like that. So now I can rotate the timer body without any interference. Okay, so now step two, instructions are remove all spark plugs and screw in the timing indicator into number one spark plug hole hand tight. By removing all spark plugs, you eliminate the possibility of the engine trying to start and it's easier to turn over. Well, that sounds good. Um, let's open up our fancy dancy tool here and pull out the spark plug wrench and get to it. Of course, I loosened all these nuts just so that we're all aware. Makes it easier for the video, right? Let's go to the other side of the car to take those out because that's going to be easier. you're taking these out to sit up the timing it's a good idea just to look over the plugs and make sure you haven't found any Okay. 
Now we'll screw in the uh, timing indicator. Now if you'll notice, like I said, it's got the bent piece here and that'll ride on the top of the piston. So that as it comes up, it's gonna reveal the marks here that are your timing indicators. They're, they're, they're the degrees of timing that is that we want to sit it at. So let's go ahead and put that guy in here. Make sure that when you insert that, that that stays just like that. And then we'll screw it in hand tight. Seems hand tight. Let's see what the next step is. Okay, for step three, let's see what she says. Slowly turn the engine until the indicator rises and stops moving. Rotate the barrel to line up top to center with the top of body. You will hear air coming out of the hole at the bottom of the body when you are coming up to compression stroke. You can then set Top did center stroke, but for sitting the timer, you must be on the compression stroke. Okay, sounds simple enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna push in on the crank handle, pull up and see where we are. Okay, so there's air coming out of it. There's, there's the rise. But we want the compression stroke, so now I go back down. We need to pull it back up, and when it starts rising, we need to be able to stop when it's done rising, huh? Well, that's going to be a little tricky. Hopefully you guys can see this. So it's rising. Still rising. Still rising. Still rising. Okay. So I think it stopped rising right there. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit more. Okay, right there. Okay, now it says to rotate this guy, rotate this guy until it says top dead center. I don't think you can see that, but right there, I think we'll be top dead center. Let's get a better view of it. So here that you can see, you can turn this barrel and as you're turning it, it's going up on this screw. So right now, I think it's sit at top dead center. That's what we're gonna go with and that's what the instructions asked for. Okay, so step four says, remove number one coil timer wire from the connection at the coil box end. So that is the black wire that goes to this far left one if you're standing at the front of the car. Connect the LED light black clip to the wire, which I did, so it's right here. And then the red clip to the battery positive connection at the coil box. I'm gonna run it to the battery positive at the uh, uh, terminal block here. Step five is slowly turn the engine until the 15 degree mark on the barrel lines up on the top of the body. So right now it's at top dead center. I need to 
crank the engine a little bit until it's level with 15 degrees. So, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, let's try and get you a better view. Okay, so now you have a great view of what we're looking at. We need to get it so that it's level with 15 degrees and without going over, because then I got to stir all over. So, hopefully this works. Just a tiny bit more, right? Just a little bit here. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. And that was step five. Okay, step six. If the LED is on, rotate the timer body counterclockwise until it goes out and then turn it back clockwise until it just comes on. If the LED is off right now, rotate the timer body clockwise until it just comes on. You have your timer set at 15 degrees after top dead center. All right, so you might be able to see that. The LED is in fact on. So it says to rotate the timer body counterclockwise until it goes out and then turn it back clockwise until it just comes on. So let's do that real quick. So we need to push the timer. Okay, so that's clockwise now and the light went out. Hopefully you guys can see this. Now I need to pull it back towards me clockwise until it just comes on. So it's right there. Let's push it a little bit farther. So that's on. So I need to push it just back a little bit. Okay, so that is just barely on. Now, let's see what the next step is. Okay, step seven. With the advance and retard lever all the way up, try and connect the rod to the timer without moving the timer body. If it does not align with the hole in the timer, then bend the rod to lengthen or shorten it until it will just go through the hole. Replace the cotter pin. The timer is now set and adjust it to the advance and retard lever. Okay, so that's step seven, but if you remember step six, let's go over that one more time. If the LED is on, the rotate the timer body counterclockwise, which is to the passenger side, until it goes out. So it's out right now. And then turn it back clockwise towards the driver's side until it just comes on, okay? So we want it to be on, but barely, okay? So I wrapped a rag around that LED and I've used my handy dandy bending tools that I think almost everybody has at this point. If you don't, definitely get a pair. I can uh, put a part number uh, for them in the uh, video or the description. So I'll do that for you guys. So I have bent the timer rod a little bit and uh, I didn't want to have to watch you guys. Uh, I didn't want you to have to watch me do that. So. Right now, the timer, the advanced and retard lever is all the way up on the steering column. And I think I have it just perfect right now. So it's off. And 
It, the timer rod is just sitting on the hole on the bottom of the steering column for that. For that. So what I'm going to do is slowly pull it and push it all the way in. So there you go. So I think that's exactly how it should be. So again, it's barely on and it is now tied to the advanced lever. So I think we're good to go. I hope you guys can see that. I mean, you can see that now that it's on. Yeah, see it's on. And I'll take it, I'll take it off again real quick. So we'll pull it out of the hole and as soon as I do that, it goes off. See how it's off there? Now again, I'll push it back into the hole. So right now it's sitting in the hole and it, the light's completely off. Now, as soon as I push it down far enough to put the cotter pin through the end, it comes on. So I think that's exactly where I want it. Uh, step eight, go for a drive, come, come back, wipe it down and have a beer. Uh, so I'm gonna put it all back together and start it up for you guys. See what you think. Okay, so we connected the number one coil box wire, uh, installed all the spark plugs, installed the spark plug wires, and then definitely make sure to put the cotter pins on both ends of the timer rod. Um, so I think we're good to go. I am going to use the electric starter on it. It's cold. Let's find out how she goes. There you go.